the official podcast of the Jacksonville Public Library. So official. I'm Hurley. I'm Jenna. Today we have a special guest on our show, G. Ella, who is a DJ, musician, and educator here in Jacksonville. But before we sit down with G. Ella, we want to talk about what we're reading. You checked it out with your library card. Tell us what you're reading. Curly, what are you reading? Well, Jenna, I'm so glad you asked because I just started reading a new book over the weekend. It's called My Sister the Serial Killer by a Nigerian author named Oyinkan Braithwaite. And it's about, oh my gosh, it's such a crazy book. It's about this woman whose sister, as the title says, is a serial killer, which we find out from the very beginning when she's just killed her most recent boyfriend. And so the sister, it's told from the point of view of the sister, she has to help her sister clean up the body what? yeah and eventually the, the sister who's telling the story is a nurse and she has a really big crush on a doctor that she works with and so the narrator's sister comes to the hospital one day meets the doctor and starts dating him and we already know what happens with these guys she dates it does oh, not no. end well for them so the narrator is left wondering what's going to happen how do i intervene should i what do i do so i don't know what's going to happen yet i haven't finished it but all of that information is just you know in the front of the book right and it's a crazy opening and i don't i just every page i'm like how is she going to wrap this up i have no idea so highly recommend this book for anyone who loves true crime serial killer books anything along those lines Jenna, what are you reading? Um, well, I actually just finished The Other Woman by Sandy Jones. Oh, that's been a really popular book, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. I saw it um, one of Reese Witherspoon's uh, Sunshine Book Club picks. Mm -hmm. And so I put it on hold um, and I just finished it. So it's about this girl. It's set in the UK and it's about this girl who's like, you know about in her 30s I think and has never really had any serious boyfriends and she finally meets this guy in a bar seems really great they start dating and you know after a couple of months she's like when can I meet your mom and so they finally meet her his mom and it turns out that like she's trying to break them up and like the other woman is this guy's mom and so he's oh, man. yeah she's like this psycho and you know fakes having cancer and like all kinds of stuff to like get Yikes. them to break up and in the end there's like this huge twist of and the villain the, who the villain is seen is switched so I don't know it was a really cool ending and I like stuff like that like sweet yeah it's kind of a thriller I guess I don't know romance yeah sort of but the end has like a little twist it's great Love it. Has everything you need for yeah. a good read. Yeah, it was what great. What format did you read that on? I listened to it. You I think listen I listened to, to this in whole one on audio. I didn't read the book at all. Wow. Yeah. That's unusual. I think. No, I had the ebook too. Dang it. Mm, okay. I did. Okay. Because while I'm like driving and stuff, I like to listen to it on, on audio. And then when I get home, like after work, I'll read it. Right. On my Kindle. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. But it, I read it in like three days. It was great. Quick one. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. And the, both of those books that we just talked about were 2018 books, right? They sure were. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Look at us. Still, Staying current. Still yeah. reading new books. True to form. I read mine in print. I'm reading mine in print. And of it's a very small book, which is... Yeah, just, you said you started it this weekend and it's almost over. Yeah, I, I guess I don't mean so much length. It's just the pages are really small. Like it's just, it's like a, oh, it's like like a, a pocket size okay, kind of I book. Yeah. <laughs> I don't She's know. She's showing me with her hands. Yeah, then. right, right. <laughs> it's a small book. <laughs> Today, as we said before, we have Giella on our show. They are a DJ and rapper and educator here in Jacksonville and just one of the loveliest people you'll ever meet in your life. Yeah, they were DJing at the library. I mentioned this and I definitely made a fool of myself just having a great time dancing <laughs> when they were playing. It was awesome. It was on brand for Jenna Hassel. But really, when, when Giella plays, it's like impossible not to dance. Yeah. So here they are, Giella. Giella, thank you so much for coming today. Of course. Thank yeah. you all for having me. This is so cool and Aww. cute. Yes. <laughs> so you are perhaps most well-known around town as a DJ. How did you get your start DJing? Yeah, so it's actually really funny because like 
half people know me from DJ and the other half know me from like singing and like rapping and stuff because I was actually a singer and a rapper before I was a DJ okay so it's like now that like DJing is kind of like my second wave of GLF if that makes sense mm-hmm. that makes <laughs> so sense. um probably about I've only been DJing for a year so a year ago um my friend and I Black Kala we had this um this night called uh Queens of the Night, where we like did lineups of like all women of color. And so we had a DJ, um, her name is Luna, and we were doing our second installment. We were like, oh, she's gonna be out of town. Like, we don't have a DJ. And I was like, well, I've kind of played around on like a controller. So, um, so then I just DJed for that night and I was like, oh, I like this. This is fun. Very cool. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so what does it take like in this digital age? What does it take to be a DJ nowadays? Well, I'm still learning every single gig that I have. So <laughs> I think just like watching like videos like has helped me a lot. Um, and I kind of felt like really amateur for like doing that. But, uh, I think it was like two months ago, there was an artist I was here. His name is Rio and, um, the art Republic like sponsored his like first solo event. And he's done stuff for like Beyonce and like Astro World. And one of the things that he said that he watches a lot of videos still on YouTube, like he self taught a lot of himself. So I was like, okay, well, I don't feel as bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So I think it's just like, for me anyways, it's just like being open and not being afraid to like make mistakes. Cause I still do, you know, sometimes and it's okay. Like the gig like keeps going, you know? Right. And I've taught myself a lot of things just by like making a lot of mistakes and problems happening. Like my computer crash, I didn't have like money to get it fixed. So I figured it out and did it myself and wow. installed some RAM and a hard drive and my <laughs> own computer. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Just by watching a video, you know, cause I was like, well, I got this gig that I got to do next week and I don't have time to be paying like all this money that I don't have. And I like figured it out, you know? Right. So That's- I think it's just, you know, being willing to like, you know, respect your own hustle and just figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. That's so empowering. <laughs> That's yeah. how we got this podcast. Right. I mean, like, we just figured it out. Exactly. You know? well, yeah. We were podcasted before, but yeah. here we are. And yeah. believe in yourself and just keep dreaming. Like, I would have never thought, like, I, have you know, respect so many DJs, like, Peyton Locke in our community that helped me a lot along the way even as like a musician in general so it's like I still feel weird when people are like oh DJ G Ella and I'm just like oh but I'm starting (laughs) to learn to embrace it you know because I I do do it I'm I'm gigging a lot more DJing than I am you know doing vocals and stuff so and are you still doing vocal work music oh yeah Yeah. definitely I've got um, a couple of shows coming up which I'm excited about and still working on a new EP with um, my producer Willie Evans Jr. We're working on some things too. So yeah, I miss I miss singing, and so it's like a it's fun because it's like when I was kind of like getting burned out from singing, like I picked up DJing, and now like having the DJing, I'm like, okay, this is cool. I'm getting a little bit burnt out, so now I get to go back, you know, yeah. to like doing other things. So yeah, <laughs> very cool. And and a lot of your music, I mean, I've had the chance to see you perform before. Oh, You're yay. out of this world, amazing. Oh, thank you. Yes, of course. <laughs> Um, and you use your your voice as a voice of social change. You, oh, yeah. You really, it seems like your goal is to speak up for the misunderstood a yeah. lot in your work. Um, what drives you to speak up and speak out through your music specifically? I think it's just like, for me, like representation. Um, a lot of, when I was like coming out, like I did not see a lot of like queer, like, people of color or like queer like black women at all except for one um singer who's one of my favorite is um Sid from the internet she was the only like you know like queer woman that I like saw and so I feel like I try to use my platforms to speak to a lot of things that a lot of people don't understand and like that a lot of people don't know and a lot of experiences that I experience in being in the south you know as a queer black person and also I'm um, half uh, Mexican too so as a Afro Latinx that lives in the south you know and a lot of the things that I've experienced like in music and also being a woman so it's just it's so many like layers to it you know and once I started speaking out about that I realized that I wasn't alone like there's a lot of people in my community that identify with the things that you know I go through so yeah it, I try to do that with 
everything that I do. <laughs> Especially with your education too and having this some of those young people to see yeah. themselves in exactly. you and what you're able to do is really powerful. Yeah, and I try to do that cuz like I wanted to you know have someone like that like if I went to a school and like I, there was a girl there with her hair half shaved and a dreadlock in her head I'd be like who are you mm -hmm. like what's up with you and it's really cool to be working with kids and they see that and they don't understand you know they'll try and pick at me I'm like I know you think I'm cool so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know but I was picked on my whole life so that and it's like a moment that I can teach them to I'm like okay like there's nothing that you're saying right now that I've never heard, you know, and just kind of getting them to like think about it, too, you know, but also to don't let these kids come for me. They come for me. I'm, I'm tearing them up. Yeah. <laughs> they gotta and learn. and yeah. they respect me, too, for that, because I work with a lot of teenage boys. So they're like, Miss Graciela, why are you? I'm like, listen, <laughs> don't don't be coming for me. <laughs> and it, it helps me like build a relationship with them, too, where they like trust me, you know, and they know not to mess with me. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And representation is something we talk about so much here at the library, too, yeah. because there's so much power in yeah. seeing yourself projected to you in a book yes. or in music in your case. So yeah. Very admirable work you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Definitely. I appreciate that. So we read on your website that you survived a nearly fatal car crash yes. a few years ago. Yes. Tell, tell us what happened. It, it oh, caused no. your car to flip three times. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh so I was um, I still live in Springfield, but but when I had first moved to Springfield, I was heading to work. Um, so I was going down um, Emerson, like towards going um, to the mall, because that, that's where I worked at Vans at the time. And um, I got hit by a semi truck. Oh my god! Oh, yeah, wow. and it was a hit and run. Oh, y'all! No. I know it was. It was a mess. And um, my car flipped three times, and I survived. <laughs> obviously, thank goodness. No broken bones, like no scratches. I just really? had a bruise. Yeah, it was. Good thing you were you wearing your yeah, seatbelt. I was wearing my seatbelt. Yeah, yeah. hundred um, percent. And it literally completely changed my life. I kind of like. I did go through obviously like a stage of depression like oh my god like I'm alive like why am I alive like what is my purpose like all those you know all those things like went through my head um and so and also like just a pain from like my body like headaches all the time like and just like realizing that you know I lost like my car you know my way to get around Jacksonville so it was just like a lot of things that I had to like process you know and still processing um I last year I finally um started going to therapy and just like dealing with like a lot of the things that I never like dealt with you know um but it did like, get me back into um you know writing music that's when I wrote my first DPG things um I also uh, started volunteering for Girls Rock Jacksonville during that time too just because I needed to like get out of my house I needed to do things I needed to like really focus on um something else other than like my like my traumatic event that happened you know um not to ignore it or suppress it but just like just doing something you know than just like laying in bed so yeah it was it was crazy it it definitely had so it was like something about like almost dying just kind of like in a cliche way gave me another life you know and another reason to appreciate like every single moment that I have and continuing to have you know um, and I've always been like a positive person but like that moment was just like dang like I like almost lost my life, you know, and actually crawling out of the car and like seeing the car. Yeah, it was a pretty, you know, a scary, you know, time. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can yeah. imagine. That's um, insane. How has that impacted you musically, do you think? Oh, I so my my first EP pretty much is about you know, my accident and like my mental state at the time. Um, and I had like just came out too. So it was just like a lot of like life things that were like happening at once. Oh yeah, and a lot of big changes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. know what the universe was telling me, you know, still don't, I still don't know what it, it was telling me. <laughs> Join um, the club. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it just really taught me to, you know, really just appreciate again, like every single moment that I have, you know, um, and just being able to get also my mental health together, you know, getting that right. Um, that was awesome to like really 
try to uh, do that. And that's what I did last year. It was like, you know, I went and saw a therapist for the first time. Uh, my therapist is amazing. I love, I go to the women's center. Um, and to be able to have access to free, you know, mental health is like amazing too. Um, and work through a lot of things like with my therapist about it too. So it's definitely, um, it helped me to kind of like realize like who really I am and other traumas that I had too, other than just like this accident, you know? So, yeah. Definitely, yeah. And, and you mentioned <laughs> earlier that you're also an educator and you've you've taught several workshops here at the library, <laughs> yes. including they're not subjects that you hear about in classroom settings very yeah. often. But we're glad that you taught workshops on DJing, songwriting, hip hop, zine making, yes. even, which is one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> yes, same. <laughs> um, as an educator, what do you hope to share with your students about these subjects that you're so passionate about? Um, I think just to really be themselves, you know, um, with every single one of those, like I definitely try to be as authentic as I could, you know, and letting the kids know, like, listen, there's no like right or wrong way to do whatever you want to do. You know, I'm here for the noise. I'm here for you to, you know, do whatever you want to do with the, um, with the materials that we have. And that's something that I'm very transparent about in my workshops. I'm just like, you know, we make group agreements, like whatever you need in the space, just like, let me know if you need to take a break, just go take a break, you know, whatever type of music you want to mix together, you want to do some tribe call quests with some killers, like whatever, you know what I mean? This is like your world, you know? So I try to be as, um, as like real about that as possible because I let them know like that's how I've figured out a lot of the things that I've figured out you know through like grassroots organizing and through like my friends is just like being you know true to like who you are you know yeah so, definitely yeah. <laughs> yeah I've uh you've DJed at the library during art walk a couple <laughs> yes. of times and I've uh, definitely walked through there and danced a bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah. That, that, was, that, was, that was me, the only one dancing in the I middle of the makerspace. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I love me. DJing at the library. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I walked downstairs so like after work, and here's just like this <laughs> awesome girl mixing in the middle of the ground floor of the library. It's yes. like the coolest thing. <laughs> no, it's cool because you get so many different waves of people. You get like older men that are like, what are you doing? Yeah, and then you why get, is like, this happening in my library? <laughs> right? And then kids that are just like, oh, my god like this is so cool you know mm -hmm. so it's like a range of people i love it it's Man, fun i wish we had like a standing date with Biela <laughs> at the library to dj oh like god. every other week or something just to mix that it up would be amazing yeah, that'd be just, so cool we just need to have a dance party i yes. think so too oh, like yeah. random yes. dancing let's do that <laughs> <laughs> oh god so much fun that would be awesome well speaking of dance parties yeah. whew, what a transition <laughs> you Giella, are the creator of an amazing dance party called duval folks yes what motivated you to create it? And also just tell us a little bit about it for yeah. those who are unfamiliar. So Duval Folks is a dance party that I created here in Duval. Duval. <laughs> Duval. <laughs> and um, pretty much the inspiration behind it was to have like a queer like dance party because we have like queer like spaces, I guess like clubs here uh, or gay clubs. And there's a, for me, there's a big difference between like gay and like queer. Cause gay to me is like, you know, just like your standard, like just like queer or, or gay flag, you know, it's, I don't know how to really explain it if that makes sense, mm -hmm. but it's just like, there's just a huge difference. Like queerness is just, it's free. It's not like a standard if that, that there you go. It's mm -hmm. not like a standard, you know? And, and it's um, more inclusive. Too. Yeah. It's more inclusive and it's more understanding of like the fluidness of what to me, like what queerness is and gay is just like one one certain way to look at it you know and queerness is just being free you know and then to me that's how i i can that's the best i can like sure, describe it totally you makes know sense. there's tumblr yeah. things you can look it up <laughs> <laughs> see you get it or you don't and so um i got inspired because i went to the girls rock conference um we they have it every single year up in um, new jersey and there was this um this queer woman of color um name um, Jafar Flowers and she has a dance party called Ice Cream Socials and in her city she just felt like she didn't fit in like there wasn't a lot of spaces for like queer people of color and so she created this like dance night and I'm like dang that's what Jacksonville needs like there's like gay clubs but like we're segregated to this night of like urban dance night and it's like why are we segregated to that when hip-hop is like 
always the top 20 songs in the USA, you know? We shouldn't have to be, like, pushed off to the side, you know? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to create a dance night. And I didn't know it was going to be, like, as popular as it was. I was like, I want to create a commercial for this dance night. So I got some of my friends. I was like, listen, you're going to model for me. We're going to make a music video. They're like, gee, I don't model. I'm like, <laughs> listen, we're, we're going to look hot. Like, it's going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and we created the materials for it. And people were, like, really confused. They're like, I don't know what this is is but I'll show up at 1904 and I'm thankful to 1904 for hosting it and it just exploded into this this huge thing and it's it's amazing and it, it's cool to see like my friends and just like other people that I don't even know that were like yo I have never been in a space where I have felt so free like where I felt safe where I felt like I could dance and nobody judged me and I met so many people that you know were very accepting of who I was you know and like everyone's dancing together there's like a good time like good music and so yeah it just kind of like flourished from there so yeah and that's really powerful so yeah what, it's amazing what you <laughs> happens at one of these parties it gets crazy <laughs> that's the best way I could like describe it there's just it's beautiful because you have like the straight boys like encouraging the queer boys that are on stage dancing you have like the girls like that are dancing and like feel like the femmes that are feeling safe and feeling empowered by other like femmes and it's just like I don't know. It's it's beautiful, to be honest. And I've never experienced that in any DJ setting that I've ever had. And it's it's crazy to see that I created that, you yeah. know. And it's um, it's also it, it just feels good because I also get random people that are messaging me or people on the streets that are like, yo you're you're the dj girl you know i was at your party like i had so much fun you know and it's just awesome to know that that is here and that you know that it's there for people that felt the same way that i felt when i went into certain spaces as a femme like not feeling protected and not feeling safe and it's like we can have this night for us you know and not even just for me but for like everyone that feels like good and wants to just honestly just dance you know right. and not feel um and, it, and it's no shade no tea to like other like um venues or anything like that but this space is very intentional and like I try to let folks know like hey listen if you're not gonna come here to like be like safe and don't touch people like ask people for their pronouns and don't be asking no requests from your dj <laughs> <laughs> then you can be like in this space you know and people have echoed that and people have really respected that and it's just it's a it's i don't know it's, a, it's such a fun night yeah you know? and so and i'm also trying not to like oversaturate it either and try to have one like every single night or like every single friday night you know because i want it to be a special thing you know and I want and I'm also very intentional about the um now about the videos that I make for the marketing for it and the posters and stuff like I want to showcase like you know a lot of um beautiful like creatives in our city that are of color and the music that I use too for the videos I always use a um a Duval artist so trying to like also keep my ear on the ground for like um, Duval artists and like using that in the marketing and stuff that I do so it's a very like Jacksonville thing and I, I want it to grow and I wanted to keep it like you know safe for like folks to come through and like dance you know and it's not just for um too because a lot of folks are like well I'm white can I come and I'm like yes like you <laughs> you definitely can come and I I want folks to know that it's not like you will feel uncomfortable if you're not there but also just like knowing to be respectful of like POC bodies you know not like touching someone or like touching their hair and like bringing up those like conversations that are kind of like eh, you know but that need to be talked about because those people are the ones that feel uncomfortable in every single space that they're in. So it's like every single place that I go to, I feel exactly what you're feeling right now, you know? So yeah, right. it's and like then bringing to, awareness to right. that. Right, and creating a sacred space yeah. where people can feel safe. That's, yeah. wow. I'm excited to come to one of the parties <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, awesome. yes. I'm so excited. So and I've seen the videos. The videos are so cool. You yeah. have like, 
it's kind of 90s feeling yeah. like VHS yeah. tape yeah my yeah. friend um, Tenny Rudolph who was um, featured mm-hmm. he was yeah, yeah. That's right. he's yeah. the one that does like all the, the vintage videos and stuff okay. and then Tony um, oh, my, oh, I always say his name wrong he gonna be upset this is the second interview and I, I still forget to ask him how to say it right but Tony Smergel oh yes small he's gonna be upset when he hears <laughs> this <laughs> Sorry, you know, Create Jacks. That's what I should have started. Yes, with. Create yes, Jacks. Yes, he runs the you know, Instagram account. He runs create the, Jacks, he runs yes. the Create Jacks. Um, he does all my pictures too. So um, it's really cool to have both of them. And also, um, Summer Wood, she does my. Um, she did all the logo branding and stuff for Duval folks. So yeah. she's not here, but she's still Duval. Yes, she's still Duval. <laughs> yes. Always. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And you've mentioned Girls Rock Camp a few yes. times. You're very involved with Girls Rock yes. Jacks. Were you involved with it from the very beginning? No, I wasn't, okay. unfortunately. Um, I joined um, two years after it started. Oh, very cool. Yeah, okay. so I've still been with them for about five or six years. But, ooh, excuse me, my allergies. But, um, but yeah, I've, I've been... The second, the after the second year, the third year is when I joined. Gotcha. Yeah. So for our listeners who are unfamiliar yeah. with the amazingness that is <laughs> Girls Rock, can you tell us a little bit about yeah, it? Yeah. So Girls Rock is a week long summer camp for girls, um, gender nonconforming, and trans youth. So we basically use music as a vehicle for social justice. So the youth get assigned an instrument, and then in a week they write a song. So they're either assigned to bass, drum, keys, um, or guitar. And they get like uh, in, blah, blah, blah. they get lessons on like how to play the instruments. Uh, we also do workshops on like intersectional feminism, like gender and identity, herbalism, like all these things. And um, that's basically what happens like in that week. But the at the end, the youth um, do a big showcase of their original music um, as a band. So, yeah. That's it's really so fun. That's cool. fun. So it's like yeah. collaborative too, and they yeah. get to like work together. Yes, and do yeah. A show. They they make a logo, like oh, they fun. screen print their shirts and everything. And Girls Rock isn't just like a Jacksonville thing; it's actually an international program. So there's camps like over in London and Africa, um, all over Canada. It's like all over the world. So it's just like a grassroots organization here in um, town. But in other cities, you know, they're five hundred ones or they're just like LLCs, like huge um, uh, things in some other cities like Philadelphia and like LA and stuff. Wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. So what's your favorite thing about the Girls Rock mission? Uh, I think my favorite thing is probably the inclusiveness of everything and also the education that I've gotten, um, that I've gotten and also that I've learned from like other uh, campers and just like other um, organizers within the organization um, that I've met like from all over the world um, and their willingness to like help others I and like give uh, how you say like what's the word I'm looking for um, like I've just learned so much like cross what is the word I'm looking for I can't think of what I'm looking for but basically I've learned a lot of things from like other uh organizers and stuff um just about like setting up workshops like getting gigs and stuff like that and the trade-off for that like when I was like hey friends like I'm going to LA like I had three shows booked and I had somewhere to sleep and it cost me nothing you know and the reason why I went over there was to work for Girls Rock Santa Barbara so then my flight was paid for so it's like Girls Rock just is such a huge network you know Mm -hmm. and they're willing to do anything for you and like help you so I love it and just like feeling like held by you know that organization and yeah they're amazing so so cool (laughs) so what do you like most about working with kids and teens oh man there's so many things I love I think I think they're just like their willingness to like kind of be open to anything you know I, I definitely admire and they're, uh, they're like absorbing so much, you know, and they're very like impressionable. And I love that because it's like that's something I try to make sure that I keep, you know, I always want to try to do new things and try to be open to like new experiences and wanting to do like whatever I want to do, you know. And that's something that like my mom has even said about me. She's just like, I just love how you just want to like do anything and everything and nothing 
nothing is off limits, you know? And I think that's my favorite thing about kids is like, they don't, they don't really care. They're just yeah. like, they're, they're willing to living. try. Yeah. yeah. You know? And, um, I'm, I'm here for that. Mm-hmm. And kids are so funny. Oh my God. <laughs> I work with kindergartners and they just, some of the stuff they say, I'm just like, I'm dying on the floor, like laughing. And <laughs> I just, I love it. Kids are funny. <laughs> yeah. They're the best. Yes. So Giella, we asked this at the end of all of our interviews. We want to know when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I think I did want to be an entertainer. Like I was really obsessed with, um, Lauren Hill and Selena, like both oh, of them. Mm-hmm. Also, <laughs> Selena obsessed yeah. from a young Selena, age. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't know. I just, I always loved being on stage. Like when I was in elementary school, I was like the forefront of every single play. Like I was doing the solo or auditioning for it. And, you know, I went to La Villa, I went to DA. So it's like music has been such a huge part of my life. So I think I'm just living out like what I've always wanted to do. Like I'm an artist. I use my, um, I pay my bills with like my art. So my art. So I think, I think I like grow. I grew up to what I wanted to be. Oh, <laughs> we love to hear that. Yes, this is awesome. The ideal yeah. answer. Well, we're so glad that you're doing what you want to be doing, Giella. Thank, Thank you so much yeah. for coming on our show. Of course. Yeah, no, come back to the library amazing. and DJ for us. Oh yes. So yes. we can dance while we're at work. To. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. want to go to Duval folks now I know I know when they were talking about it I was like oh that sounds so fun I just want to get my groove on I know the branding for that is really cool too it has like you said like a really 90s grunge look to it yeah for sure and you can find out all about Duval folks on Instagram they have their own Instagram account at Duval folks f-o-l-x Yes, and Giella also has an Instagram at Ella, and also you can find Giella's music at gxellamusic.com. While you're on social media, make sure you follow us as well at Jack's Library. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And visit our podcast page, jackspubliclibrary.org slash podcast. Yes, please subscribe to our show if you are listening on iTunes so you don't miss a beat. And go ahead and rate us and leave a review much obliged people we appreciate it this podcast was produced by brian thomas aka bt aka producer Producer Brian. brian goodbye